Hello, we'd like to welcome everyone to our Vacation Bible School. I know this is a little different than what we've ever been a part of before, uh, but different times calls for different measures. And uh, we thank, want to thank everyone for uh, just putting all of this together and welcoming you. Uh, we thank you for logging on to this wonderful Bible School, and uh, we're very grateful for all that is done. There's several things that we need to discuss here today. Uh, most of the time, we have a Bible School a project. And this Bible school project this year is, uh, is the 24-7 church. Uh, Brother Chad Kivett and his family are, 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 church, are planting this church and doing a wonderful job in the Sevierville, Kodak area. Uh, right now, the, the church building is undergoing some renovations. And the monies that we receive this week for Vacation Bible School will go to Brother Chad and his, his project uh, for renovating. And in your packet, you'll find a couple things. Uh, dealing with this. One thing will be Brother Chad's picture, him and his family, the picture of the Kibbutz. And on the back it tells just a little bit about who Brother Chad is, who his family is, uh, how long he's been in the ministry and those type of things. Also, in the same little uh, uh, Ziploc bag, you'll find quarter folders. Now, in a day where everyone says we have a shortage of coins, let's show them we don't have a shortage of coins. And let's fill these co these coin folders with just uh, with with just as much coins as we can put in them, and we'll gather them back again and and collect them, and we'll send that all all the monies that you give will go directly to Brother Chad, the twenty four seven church for the renovations, and we're very grateful for that. We also want to start today uh, with a pledge allegiance to our our flag, to the American flag, to the Christian flag, and to God's word. And, but we just want to welcome you all here today. Uh, if you're, uh, you know, our, our webpage is limestonefwb.org. On there you'll find all the information you need about our church, about links, about this Vacation Bible School. We are excited for what God has in store for this coming week. At this time, let's go ahead and do our pledges. Ready, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to which republic it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. Ready, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to its Savior for a kingdom it stands, one brotherhood, uniting all Christians in service and in love. To God's Word, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's Holy Word, a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we love you for this wonderful vacation Bible school that you have blessed us with, for the many workers that have made this possible. Lord, for the parents and just the, the guardians and the grandparents that are showing this to their children, Lord, I pray today, Lord, it will bless in a marvelous way. Lord, we thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we want to thank you and sit back and enjoy the ride of this wonderful, wonderful time that we're going to have in Bible school this week. God bless you. Have a safe week. Hey kids, welcome to Incredible World Amazing Park. We're going to learn about God's Word this week with you guys and have some fun, of course. Roller coasters aren't the only thing that's going to be incredible this week. We're going to go on an incredible ride through God's Word and through creation. So this week, our, um, yeah. in fact, today's theme is Creation Day. And we're going to talk about and head off into the God's Word when God created all things. And we're going to strap on our roller coaster seatbelt and head that way. So we're going to talk about having some fun because amusement parks are fun and God's Word is fun. So if you'll join me, we're going to learn about some extreme animals. Every day this week, we're going to feature some of these extreme animals. We'll call them Incredibles because Creator God made them incredible. The first one we're going to talk about is the Tiger Beetle. How about this extreme dude? He's called a tiger beetle, and he's the fastest bug on the planet. He can go six miles or more per hour, which may not sound fast, but for a bug, that's incredible. If we were like the tiger beetle, we'd be running at a speed of about 500 miles per hour, 
which is the speed at which a jet airplane, airplane flies. In fact, this little bug goes so fast, its brain can't process what it's seeing, so it goes blind while it runs. The next one is a millipede. Talk about extreme. This millipede is over 15 inches long and has 256 legs. And some millipedes has as many as 750 legs. How would you like to take that guy shoe shopping? <laughs> the next one is a rhinoceros beetle. And then he's the strongest out there. This little guy can lift 850 pounds his own weight, which would be like us lifting a tank. And our next fun extreme animal, how extreme and bizarre an animal called the tube worm. It can survive at the bottom of the ocean in poisonous gases with its head in boiling water and its bottom in freezing water. And last but not least of all the extreme animals, a favorite has got to be dinosaurs like T-Rex. Can you imagine how scary it would be to come face to face with a T-Rex? Then again, it actually wouldn't have been scary at all at the beginning of God's creation when everything was good and we wouldn't be eaten. Here is Rex to remind you of what we're going to learn. That God is the creator of all the incredible animals, including dinosaurs, and he created them all within two days. God didn't need millions of years to make the world because he's God and he's extremely incredible. Nothing is hard for him, so get ready to learn all about God's incredible world this week at Incrediworld. And let's start out with Incrediworld Amazement Park Song. <coughs> creation this week but you know I've got something I've got to get you to do before we get started for you to be able to get into the amazement park you have to have a wristband so get in your packets 
and you'll have a folder if you haven't already found it. You've got a little band in there that goes around your wrist. Uh-oh, I begin to think I've lost mine. I wouldn't be able to get in the park myself. It looks like this, so just take it apart. You can have your moms and dads to help you there to just strap it on your wrist so that we can get started on this incredible journey that we're going to be on this week. So let me get mine attached here while you're getting yours attached and we'll be ready to go. I want to thank everybody for coming out today and appreciate the parents and grandparents and maybe babysitters or your older siblings that are going to be there to help you out. Uh, we'll be seeing Miss Brandy after a while. She'll be helping us with our crafts. and So we're just looking for a really, really good, good day. So I want to welcome you again as park riders. You know, we live in an incredible world of wonders. It's designed by the master creator himself, our God. So we're going to have a really big week this week with a lot of thrill rides as we go through God's amazing, awesome, incredible creation. So, um, all right, everybody ready? You got your bands on? You got on your comfy shoes? Oh, you might need some sunglasses. I'm gonna put mine on top of my head for right now. So let's get ready to go into our theme park. Now, if you don't have your sunglasses today, then maybe you can get them tomorrow. We're going to be talking about Bible glasses tomorrow, so that'll be a, a fun, fun lesson tomorrow where we see things through our Bible glasses. All right, now, you know, we have a lot of good sound effects when it comes to a theme park, so I'm going to let you all help me out with some of the sound effects as we go through our story. So, we're going to go back to the beginning beginning of time. Do you realize there was a time when there was no time? So I'm going to have my TV here. It's going to help me out a little bit. All right, let's see here. Do you hear that? All right, so let's do that again. There was a time when there was no time. Help me say it together. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Cuckoo. All right. Now, listen to this. In God's own time, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and God Himself were there before time ever began. And, you know, we don't think about that. You know, we've always had a time when there was time. But God is so awesome that he's even outside the realm of time. But you know something? The God tells us that there was a time when things didn't exist. It was just like there was nothing. It was just like, you know, water. We heard that water sloshing. Help me do the sloshing. When you think of water, Water doesn't have form, does it? Well, that's how it was before time began. Nothing existed. Nothing. There was nothing there. But we're going to look at our theme verse, and it's Genesis 1-1. The very first verse in the very first book of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I mean, that he created it all. Say that with me. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's our theme verse for this whole week. One more time. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, notice right away that the Bible tells us who created everything. Who was it? God. That's right. He must consider that that was important information because he started the Bible off with that very verse. 
He wanted us to know in his word that he created it. You know, sometimes you'll hear people talk about a big bang theory. That's hogwash. You know, there's no such thing as a big bang theory. You know, it wasn't a big, gigantic, cosmic explosion that happened billions of years ago. That's not what God's Word says, is it? From a careful study in the dates of the Bible, they used the genealogies in Genesis and Exodus, especially Genesis 5 and chapter 11, we know that it happened about 6,000 years ago. And God created heaven and earth just in six days. Do you think it was hard for God to do that and get it all done in six days? No way. There's nothing too hard for God, is there? Because God's incredible. And He created an incredible world. Incredible creatures. And that's what we're going to be studying about. You know, when we look at the next verse, it tells us that the Bible... The Bible says that the earth was without form and void. In other words, void means that it didn't have a shape, just like we talked about the water a while ago. The earth was just shapeless. You know, it was void, meaning it was empty. There was no plants, no animals, no people, nothing. Can you imagine creating something from nothing? If you wanted to make something, you'd have to start with some supplies, wouldn't you? You'd have to have something. So, like, for instance, if we were going to bake these brownies, we'd have to have a brownie mix. We'd have to have eggs, and oil, water. So we had to create brownies. We had to have something to make the brownies out of. But, you know, the Bible tells us that God created it all. He is the only one that can create something out of nothing. And so in the beginning, God created from nothing. Now, turn the lights off a minute. Turn the lights off on it? Yeah. All right. God said, let there be light. And there was light. That was the first, that was in verse 3. God said, let there be light. And there was light. So basically, after he created the earth, he created light. Now, as we read verses 2 through 3, and I'm reading out of God's holy word, the Genesis, which is the first book in Genesis, means the beginning. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And you know something? When we look at that, we have day one. He, that was day one. God created a sky in the middle of the waters. That's in verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. I'm glad God made the sky because that's where we get our air to breathe. We'd die without air, wouldn't it? So it was smart that God made air first. So take the biggest, deepest breath of air you can. Doesn't that feel good to be able to breathe? God did that for us. God called the sky heaven. Now, as we look, we have the day two. God created a sky in the middle of the water. He called the sky heaven. And so the evening and the morning were the second day. So two days. We've got two days. Now. You know what that is? That's God gathering the waters together. 
because remember we said that that everything was without void it was without form and void so on the third day God said for the waters to be gathered together into one place and for dry land to appear and it was so God called the dry land earth and the water he called the seas and God saw that it was good and then God said for the earth to bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. Now, hmm, we're going to come back to that here just a minute. He made the plants. Here's a sunflower. <gasps> sunflower seeds. Every plant that God created, whether it was plants that bring forth flowers and grass, or whether it's the plants like trees that bring forth our fruit and vegetables and things like that, He created that. And He made them to have seeds so that they would replenish themselves. And as time goes on, Six, mil six million, not six million, six thousand years later, we still have sunflowers and sunflower seeds. We still have grapevines. We still have our maple trees. Because within these seeds, when you plant these seeds, a little blade will shoot up, and the next thing you know, it'll bloom, and it'll produce more seeds. So it keeps going on and on and on. Isn't that incredible? God in his incredible world. You know, and it's, it's like it, he said, this, this comment that he made, it said that he said that let the seeds bring forth according to its kind. Sunflower seeds make sunflowers. They don't make grapefruit. Sunflower seeds don't make grass. They grow sunflower. So every plant has its own seed and it reproduces its own kind. It's kind of like this. When we talk about kinds, we talk about the dog kinds. If you look here at the picture, there's different species of dogs. There is one dog kind, but you can have a coyote, a collie, a, a wolf, all different kinds of dog kinds, but they're in their same category. Dogs don't produce cats. Cats don't produce monkeys. You know, they all produce their own kind. Sometimes, you know, we think that the evolutionist will say that things evolve over a period of time. They don't. God didn't make it that way. God knew what he was doing when he created all of his creation. Um, dogs don't ever develop feathers or scales, do they? Every kind is unique. And God saw that it was good. I'm going to read Genesis 1.13. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. You know, when you eat an orange, it's got seeds inside of it, doesn't it? And you could plant those seeds and you could get an orange tree. Just like I've been eating peaches this week. Oh my goodness, how good they've been. And inside that peach is a seed. And we could plant that seed and get us a peach tree. So, on day three, that's when God created the dry land and the plants. Notice he didn't do the plants before he did the land because there would have been nowhere to put the plants, would there? So they came on day three after he created the dry land what we know today as our earth. Now, God made two great lights, the sun to rule the day 
and the moon to rule the night. He made the stars also, and the stars would include the ideal of the planets. You know, we study that in science, don't we? So, let's review. You all shout out the answers if you know it. Do you remember what God created, uh, on what day God created the earth? In the beginning, God created the, right, day one, wasn't it? Now, what about the plants? Day three, right, good job. All right, what about the sun, the moon, and the stars? Yep, that come on day four, didn't it? Day four. So, those who don't trust God's word and they believe in that big bang theory say that the sun and the moon and the stars come first before the earth. But God's word doesn't say that, does it? No, it tells us the order in which things were created. You know, some people say, well, you know, that's not right because the plants needed the sun and stuff. Well, see, there was still some light there. It just wasn't, he hadn't created the sun and the moon yet, but there was still some light. And in a 24-hour period of time, plants can live that long, you know, without the sunlight. So, you know, that, so that dispels that myth there. And although some people say, um, say that that's a problem, we know that it's not a problem at all because, again, God is incredible. Okay. And you know something? The Bible again says at the end of the fourth day, and God said it was good. He, everything with God is perfect. Now let's go ahead and read Genesis 1. 19. And that's where it, it uh, tells us that, um, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, it should be Genesis 1 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and the fowl that it may fly above the earth, and the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Oh, wow. Hear those beautiful birds. So on the next day of creation, God created the birds that fly in the air and the animals that are in the sea. All of our fish and the, you know, everything that we think of being in the sea. So, and it says that God saw that it was good. Let's look at that bottled nosed dolphins. Every animal has special features. And when we look at this dolphin, uh, it says that bottled nosed dolphins are sea creatures and God designed them with a special layer of skin that's called blubber that it keeps them warm in the water. He also gave them an outer layer of skin that allows them to swim through the water smoothly with little resistance. And he gave them something that's called echolation. Now, can you say that? It's like echo, echolation. That's so they could find their food. Now, with echolation, they make a thousand clicks, a, a clicking sound. They make a, and you probably maybe have heard them do that, but they make a little clicking sound a thousand times every second. Man, I can't even think about that. Let's see if we can do a thousand in a minute. Let's go together. Let's click, 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 click. I can't even do it in a minute. But they can do that. And what that does is it's like a sound wave that bounces off things in the sea. So that helps them find their food. I guess it also helps them to, to be protected from the predators, too. Another example of God's amazing creation is the woodpecker. Now, how many of y'all have seen a woodpecker peck on a tree? I even saw a woodpecker one day pecking on the side of the house, and it was aluminum siding. I, they, I guess he thought it was wood, and all that. Don't you know that that bounced off its poor little old beak? <laughs> but anyway, they peck, 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 peck. I don't know about you, but that would give me a headache. But you know something? 
God designed them so wonderfully that so when they peck holes in trees that he's made their head so that it's got a cushion in it so that it doesn't give them a headache. And he also has tufts of feathers around their nostrils so those little wood chips don't get up their nose. That's, that's how masterful God is when he creates things. You know, they turned out perfectly just as he designed. You know, it's, it's like if I just throw a bunch of Legos out there on the table and say, okay, build me a house. That's not going to happen, is it? But you know what God said, let there be, and it came to pass because God said it and it happened. So as we look at the fifth day, that's when God created all of our flying creatures and all of our sea creatures. So next, ew. I don't even want to think about this. <laughs> He's, he, he created creeping things on the land, like the bugs and those snakes, elephants, and even dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs. So God created the rest of the creatures on day six. The land animals. Now, when we look at that, when we think about, would you listen to this? You know what that is? That's a dinosaur. Can you imagine being on the earth and watching a dinosaur walk by? But that was one of God's creations too. So, and God saw that it was good. Our Bible tells us that he said for the earth to bring forth cattle and creeping things and the beast of the earth according to its kind. And it was so. So God made all the land animals and that include the bugs and the snakes and even the, the dinosaurs. And on this day, he also made a very important creation. The first two people, Adam and Eve. And you know what the Bible tells us? It says in verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now I mentioned the word dominion there. You can say that word, it's a big word, but dominion. Dominion means to be in charge of. So, you know, it said that he put a man in charge of all the animals. In other words, if you have a dog, does that dog have dominion over you or do you have dominion over the dog? Well, most of the time, we're supposed to have the dominion over the dog. <laughs> you know, sometimes we feel like with pets that sometimes they tell us what to do. But we're, we really are in charge, aren't we? And so that's what God said, that that was the way it was supposed to be. People are supposed to have in charge of everything on the earth, including the animals. And it, that means that we need to be taking really good care of our earth and that we need to take good care of the animals and we need to use all of God's creation wisely. But animals and people aren't equal, aren't they? No, because God said he made man in his image. So that made us very, very special. We're the only part of creation that God made in his image. And so as we read Genesis 1.31, it says, And God saw everything that he had made. He looked back, and he looked at his creation and saw all that he made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the seventh day. 
Whoops. I went too far, didn't I? My finger stuttered. <laughs> and on the seventh day, God rested. You know, I'm sure, you know, God probably didn't have to rest because God is all powerful. But, you know, He did that as an example for us so that He's telling us if, you know, He can create the world in six days and on the seventh day He rested. He would want us to have a day of rest too. So, let's take a big old sigh because that's hard work, isn't it? So, now, again, there are people who try to say that it took seven or six or seven billion years for all this to take place. But I'm going to teach you a word that's really cool. And this is going to be the last thing I'm going to teach you today. But this really word cool is called yom. Y-O-M. Yom. And it's a Hebrew word that's used over and over again in the Bible. And it'll have different meanings. It might mean a day, a year, or daylight. But throughout Scripture, every time you see the word yom and the word evening and morning, or with a number, like day one, day two, day three, first day, second day, third day, it always means a 24-hour period of time. So that word yom is used in Genesis every day. When you look at the Hebrew, it will say, you know, the day one, when it uses the word yom, that's a 24-hour period of time. So literally, God made the... Uh, everything, the whole creation, in six literal days, not over a long period of time. Now, here is our memory verse for today. And it comes from Exodus 20, 11. And we'll read it together a couple of times because I want you all to know this. For in six days, the Lord made the heaven and earth the sea, and all in them is, and rested the seventh day. Let's say that again. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and he rested the seventh day. And I hope that you all have enjoyed today's lesson. It was It's a little bit longer than most of our lessons are going to be, but yet it covered God's creation. And we know that in the beginning, God created it all. At this time, we're going to meet some new friends that we've got here at Incredi World Amazement Park. Uh, we've got Roller Coaster Reese and Miss Emily. Hi. Uh, so now we have a special friend. You want to meet her? All right. Hi, what's your name? It's Reese. Roller Coaster Reese. Roller Coaster Reese? How'd you get that nickname? I love roller coasters. The tall ones, the fast ones, the loopy ones. You click, 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 click up the hill and then whoosh, down you speed. I can't get enough of them. They are loads of fun. I even got to go on a behind the scenes tour of a theme park near my house. And I met the designer of the newest coaster, the Velociraptor. Oh, that must have been awesome. It sure was. This guy designed it so it can go from zero to 100 per, miles per hour in five seconds flat. No way. That does sound like an awesome design. And since you met the designer, you would never say that it was just it just built itself with no plans or help from people, right? That's a no-brainer. A roller coaster could never build itself. You know what's crazy, Reese? What? There are people out there who say this world and all the plants and the animals and the people just happened all by itself without a designer. 
That's nutty. It is, and it's completely opposite of what the Bible tells us. I trust the Bible. I do too, because it's the only perfect book, and it always tells the truth. God says that in the beginning, He created the heavens and the earth. It didn't just happen by accident. The Bible says it. That settles it. And the Bible makes it clear that in six short days, everything was made. It didn't take a long time. In fact, God could have made everything in a second if he wanted to. Or a millisecond. Blink your eyes and imagine everything being made that fast. Ready? Blink. Our God's incredible. And even though roller coasters are cool, they're nothing like this incredible world that God designed. It makes me want to praise God. Me too. In fact, I'm going to go celebrate and ride a roller coaster. You do that roller coaster, Reese. Have fun. And boys and girls, while Reese takes off, let me teach you our echo phrase for today so we can remember that God made everything and he did it in six short days. Say it with me. In six short days, everything was made. In six short days, everything was made. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. Boy, that roller coaster is something else, isn't she? <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing them again tomorrow. So I hope y'all have enjoyed your day today um, in the Bible lesson. And let's go ahead and let's look at our echo phrase one more time that Miss Emily taught us. In six short days, everything was made. And don't let anybody argue with you about that. Okay, we look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. At this time, we're going to turn it over to uh, Miss Brandy, and she's going to show you about your craft today. Hey, guys. I hope you all got your activity craft bag from Miss Jane and the VBS helpers the other day at the drive-in so, so that you can have all the fun stuff and, and do all these activities with us to go along with the lessons you've learned. Okay, inside there'll be a folder um, and it'll have all the directions for your parents to, to, to tell you kind of what to do on each day. Um, the first day there's like some, there's, a, there's your bracelets in that going to be in there. It's going to have a little help sheet about everything. It's got a verse in there in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth and there's a color sheet just whenever you would want to color that. This is the day's lesson. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day, Exodus 20, 11. And there's another color sheet. And then you have these, these activity pages that we can make a little craft. And you have all the supply, supplies will be in your bag. Okay? You have everything in there. And so what you'll have to do is you'll have to cut the, the colored one and the white one out. Just like I did, I cut these out of the paper, and then I colored all the little pictures on them, okay? And then you place them on top of, the colored one on top of the white one, and you use the little brad that's included to go right in the middle. And if you need help with your mom, I have to help you with that part because it's a little harder. And then you have a craft stick and some tape. You're going to tape that on the back, just like that. Okay, so then you have a little wheel, and it says, in six short days, everything was made, just like we talked about, okay? And so you, day three, it has all the things that were created, like, see, all the different things are on that number. Day three, day four, day five, day six, and then day seven, of course, he rested. So there you can make a really fun wheel. Thank you so much for doing this Bible school with us. We are so excited for this week, and we can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.